It's Coach Greg Doucette, and it is Sunday morning, the morning of finals. And I thought this would be interesting for some of you who follow me because some of you may know that I did a few videos on Brandon Harding and his cycles and everything, and you thought that maybe we would hate each other, or there was some kind of thing going on. Nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, yesterday he came and uh, found me at my booth and basically talked to me for 15 to 20 minutes about how to imp improve my YouTube channel. Um, we just discussed like training in general, everything. I said I would coach him for free if he was ever interested. So hopefully he takes me up on that offer in the future. Super nice guy and f super tall. <laughs> he makes me look like a little midget, which I pretty much am anyway. But yeah, I would say he's like six foot two. Good potential, good build. And uh, it went really well. So those of you who think there's all this animosity in the sport, it's not the case. We're just telling it like it is, everybody. We're just sharing our knowledge, sharing our experience. And when we see something, we just call it out. So when I point out things or when I talk about people, it's not because I hate them. It's because... I noticed something and I just feel like the viewers would be interested in learning from it and it gives for an interesting topic. So for example, I could have made the, a, a video saying, you should take a PCT. Not as many people are gonna be interested in reading that as much as if somebody famous that they know is saying that they might not need one, okay? So it basically just, increases the amount of people that are gonna be interested in that. The most viral video I've ever done was on Mark Wahlberg and The Rock taking steroids. Everyone knows they're taking, well actually there's a few idiots out there that actually think that they don't. There's a few, not many, but there's a few. And so it's because it's so famous that people are curious, like, oh my God, The Rock, wow, let's, like, Mark Wahlberg, really? Oh my God, when, in, I mean, how do you not know this? You know what I mean? It's common knowledge. But if I would have just said, people take steroids, and then I went on about it, no one would care. No one would watch the video. I would give the same amount of information, but only reach 100 people instead of 300,000 people. So... When I talk about people, I like to talk about people that people know because you're always going to be interested in famous celebrities, people that you've spoken to or heard of or a following, and it's much more interesting. So if I do a video on somebody's cycle that you've never heard of, who cares? Say, oh, guess what, everybody? Francis DeVoe has this cycle. Who the frig is Francis DeVoe? I'm not reading this, but if I say... Hey everybody, I just found out what The Rock cycle was for his last movie role. Boom! Hundreds of thousands of people are going to want to watch it. So that's how it works, okay? So Brandon is awesome. He's going to be great. He did some stupid choices with cycles in the past. I totally blame his coach, you know, or coaches or whoever for doing it. But I also blame the person for list blindly listening to the coach. Even if you hire me as your coach, I am not a doctor. So you shouldn't just be like, oh, I'm going to do what he says. You need to research and find out what the products or items are on the list. If you don't even know what they are, at least ask the dude. Ask your coach. Be like, why am I taking methyl trianolone? Why am I taking Proviron? Why am I taking check drops? Why am I taking mint? Why? And is that dose high? One of my buddies said that they take 50. How come I'm taking 150? Just ask basic questions. And if your coach can't answer basic questions, find a better coach, a coach that can answer stuff. Imagine if I went to my doctor and said, oh man, my blood pressure is 180 over 100, doc. I know 120 over 80 is good. What do you think, doc? Yeah, that's really high. What are we going to do about it? Man, I don't know. It's pretty high. <sighs> you going to just stick with that doctor? Or are you going to find somebody that knows how to help you? 
So when I went to my own doctor and my testosterone levels were crashed and I did two PCTs in a row to get it back and six months later my testosterone levels are still crashed and my LH and L FSH are bottom and I don't feel good, the doctor didn't know how to help me. So guess what? The doctor's smart. He sends me to someone who can. Okay, if your coach doesn't know the answer, they should be smart enough to find someone that can give you the answer, okay? So if you have a coach that sucks, get a better coach. How do you know if they suck? You don't. So you have to research and find out who's a good one and who's not a good one, okay? That's my advice. Ask around. Ask, see who they've coached. Talk to them. If you talk to one person, is that enough? Somebody can ask me, hey, Greg, yeah, can you, can you recommend somebody that you coached in bikini before? Pfft, yeah, I'm going to send you my best bikini girl ever. Now I'll send you to IFBB Pro, blah, blah, blah. I'll send you to this girl that had the best transformation. They're going to speak nothing but amazing about me. There's Nikki behind me. So, yeah, we're at the hotel with Nikki. And uh, basically, that's it. I'm about to go on stage in, I don't know, three hours or something. The feedback was I'm not big enough. I weigh 0.2 pounds under the weight limit. So can I get bigger? No. I'm now three pounds over the weight limit because I ate more. But all that's going to mean is my stomach is not going to be as flat as before. But I mean, I don't think anyone will be able to tell. But I'm a bit heavier the problem, which it's hard to describe. This is the problem. I have short tibias. Tibia is the lower leg bone. It's very, very short. So like sitting up in a chair, if you were sitting at the dinner table with me, you would think I'm five foot 11 because I have a very long upper body. So my shoulders and chest and waistline and upper legs are all normal length. My tibias are dwarf crazy short so in my university when i took kinesiology we had an anthropometric measurement class so we measured the width of the elbows like here the length everything the whole body and my tibias are so short it's insane but my upper body was actually of a five foot ten to a five foot eleven man so when i'm weighed in and i'm five foot six and an eighth I have no lower leg length, which makes me five foot six and an eighth. So I have to weigh in as a guy five foot six, which means I have to weigh 185. If I had longer tibias, I could weigh 192. And there ain't no seven pounds in this part of your leg. Ugh. Okay? It's very short. You can't tell on the camera. It's very short. I can't even do seated calf raises because the machine doesn't go low enough, right? Okay? So. It's not my fault, it's genetics. If I had longer tibias, I could weigh seven pounds more. If I had a longer neck, I could weigh seven pounds more. So the weight class to height is kind of stupid. It favors guys who have excessively long legs, the lower part of the legs, because there's no beef there. If you have long quads, well, there's tons of freaking mass in your quads, okay? Uh, one, one last comment. I read, uh, I read like four hours of comments. It's amazing to see how little people know about bodybuilding and classic physique and how much some people do know. For example, comment, your hamstrings need work. That's my best body part. You have no abs. That's my second best body part. You have to really work on your chest. I'm like, really? My chest is my weak body part. That's it, that's my, it's my chest, it's my abs. That's, that's my worst, this is, this is what's horrible here. And my have no back. I, I just don't get it. Now, my arms. I broke my elbow a year ago, and I've only had like six months of training. But, I mean, they're not too bad for being injured. I'm the best I can be for what I am for my weight. And the people said, why don't you move back to 212? I'm 43 years old and I don't want to do those stupid steroid cycles I did when I was younger and endanger my health. Everyone's dying, okay? I want to be healthy. So I want to do this with the least amount of drugs possible to still be able to do this. Seeing as I'm right at the limit of 185, how much do you think I'm actually taking? Not much, guys. As much as, like, girls take. 
It's not a lot. Um, you know, you can believe what you want, but when I was natural, I was almost 180 pounds and I'm 185. It's not like I'm like a beast mode now, you know? So anyway, Brandon Harding was awesome. Great to talk to. If you haven't been following him, follow him. He's on Instagram. He has like 400,000 followers. He's a young guy, good looking guy. He'll go far in the sport. Has a good physique. It just takes some time. It's just going to take him time, okay? Um, yeah, so hopefully that clears up that people thought that there was animosity or hate or any of that bullshit. There is not. I just call it like I see it, and I'm not changing who I am. The next time somebody has a stupid cycle, I will say, this is stupid, this is why, and so on, okay? Till next time.